So this project is about uh, writing down our history, the history of the community, using art. All of us have gotten here one way or another. We started our journey perhaps in another part of the United States or another country, and, uh, and how we got here is a story that should be shared because that makes us stronger as a community and because it's interesting. And it's also because we leave something behind not only for our community, but for our family. All the young people that are in school here right now uh, are here because probably their parents or grandparents made some sacrifice to leave their home, to come here, to find better life, etc. So we all have stories. And so this project is about telling these stories. Started, I really didn't know what I was doing. But I knew that I want to depict somehow my ancestral and my own journey, which I try to do here. Position here is the, the, way I, the way I sleep. And it is much more relaxing for me because I have a back issue, so I sleep like that. When I first arrived, I was... I was trying to reassure myself as a 12-year-old that, you know, I, I spoke English, I can understand English, I can understand others, and hopefully others can understand me. I didn't dress any differently. Um, there, some scholars argue, and it's true, that Americanization in the Philippines begins in the homeland uh, because of of the U.S. colonization and then because of um, Hollywood movies that have been imported. You know, I still experience some culture shock. Um, I think I was, I felt different. You know, I, that was the first time I felt my difference. Whereas in the, in the Philippines, I was just like any others. Um, I felt difference encoded on me. I just put my uh, blue color, like a uh, piece, and I make it some trees. It's the way I cross the border by the mountain and forest. Mm -hmm. That's how I came. And I make the bird to make peace of the world, you know, like the people coming from Mexico, you know, like they suffer, have to cross it, so I take a piece. There was a war. The war was between Ethiopia and the Eritrean rebels. The rebels were um, representing the people that feel like we need to be independent, we don't belong to Ethiopia, whereas the Ethiopian army was um, the country at the time that was uh, um, known to the world. My husband was um, jailed at some point, so we left the country. Um, hoping that things will pass and things will calm down, will come back. Um, but till this day, we didn't go back, and I don't think I will. You're making a print, an imprint, not only of your body, your hands and your feet, and a silhouette, uh, an outline of your body, but you're also then starting to fill in the history of, uh, of where, you, where you come from, and salient things that happened to you in your life. Bay Farm lies in the heart of Santa Rosa's Roseland District. It's a community of mostly Latinos, but there are people from Eritrea, Europe, Laos. It's one of our most uh, diverse and culturally diverse communities here in Santa Rosa. Roseland University Prep is a small high school in the Roseland School District. The Santa Rosa Junior College Southwest Center is a separate campus that houses the JC's English as a Second Language classes. This center attracts many students, all from many different countries. Just before school started, we held a workshop here at Roseland University Prep. The high school lies in the heart of the Roseland neighborhood. We're here at the San Rosa Junior College Southwest Center at the invitation of Leslie Mencius, who teaches an ESL class here. It's kind of funny because it, it just it originated with I didn't fit on the paper. I was a little big. I didn't want to scrunch up. 
and I, I was like, what am I gonna do? And uh, when I saw it unfinished, um, I kind of noticed that the shape I made was kind of like the shape of a tree. So I decided that in resemblance to that, and again, with my love for nature, um, it, it's something that I also found that the roots, uh, replacing the roots with my feet is kind of like putting myself in the position of a tree to where that's what holds me to the ground. And since I guess um, I'm in my teenager kind of phase, I feel like I'm lost a little and I'm just like really confused. And, um, and I'm really tired. But um, I drew roots at the bottom of my body, symbolizing how I come from the Mexican culture. And even though I'm in the United States, I, I hold on to that. And my parents tell me that every time. They're like, don't forget your Spanish. And I feel like whenever I'm at home and I'm talking, I'm talking to them in Spanish and then I get like, um, what's it called when, you know, you're stuck in, <laughs> when you're stuck on, on a word. Well, that happens a lot and they're just like, it's okay, as long as you keep talking, you'll practice better. Bueno, um, me casé en México. Duré nada más poquitos meses en México, pero... Ya con mi esposo ya tenía, él tenía en mente este, venirnos para acá porque yo ya estaba embarazada y siempre pensando en el hijo que íbamos a tener eh, para que naciera aquí, para que tuviera un mejor futuro, una mejor vida. Uh, me vine a los, como los 18 años para acá y pues ya aquí fue algo diferente. He showed my struggle and my life since coming to the United States. At times, very difficult, very hard. Even though I studied English in Iran, but it was very difficult to speak it and learn the culture and the slang and communicating with, with you know, a different culture. Very difficult at first, but I was hopeful. I had hope, a lot of hope. The symbolism for me is um, we all have the, the future of the world in our hands and also hope for the world and peace, whether it's environmental um, or humanity. And, you know, we always talk about, um, you know, the, the Holocaust and, you, you know, if you if you don't remind people and remember, things like that can happen again and the same for the internment. And when I worked for the Japanese American Citizens League, it was shortly after the, um, the, uh, the Iranian embassy takeover. And in Congress, they were talking about rounding up Iranian Americans and putting them in Shea Stadium, I think it was, and imprisoning them because they were potentially a threat. And uh, I was really pleased when the Japanese American Citizens League spoke up and other Japanese American legislators said, we can't do this, you know, have we not learned our lesson? And, you know, and, and today with, uh, with uh, folks that are, are Muslim or, you know, are, their ancestors are from the Middle East or they're recent immigrants, the same racism raises its ugly head and, it's, um, I guess it's human nature, but it's the dark side of human nature. Immigrants always have interesting stories to tell because they've sacrificed to get here. They left their homeland and, and family and, and run risks and suffer to get here, all uh, to make a better life for themselves and for their families. And I think that's uh, a hero to me. Uh, that's someone with a lot of courage.